Council, our friend John Del Grover from the National Interest, who's up late with me on the Final Five. Uh, John, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Okay, you wrote a piece for FoxNews.com, and it says Trump should consider withdrawing from Iraq as well as Syria. Uh, the Syria move got a lot of play the last couple of weeks, uh, but uh, most people here in Iraq, we were supposed to be out of there years ago, so what, what gives? Uh, well, essentially what's happened is the people did want us to go out. They voted for Obama who promised that. They voted for Trump who promised that. Uh, but the problem is, is that the reality on the ground is very complicated. But you also have a lot of inertia. You have this path dependency of, oh, well, we need to do this and we need to do that and we get bogged down. And I, I think that Trump should have gone about very different way. Uh, he should have talked to our allies. Uh, we shouldn't be announcing these things abruptly. But it is the right move to uh, draw down from the Middle East. Uh, I think that's absolutely the correct thing to do. When we talked about Syria. What was the main impetus uh, for, for getting out of Syria in the first place? And, and you mentioned about the fact that, you know, we know the president has always said he trusts his gut. Uh, he, he makes moves. And then, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, shoots first and apologizes later, although he doesn't necessarily like to apologize. Uh, what, what is to lose? What is to gain by us getting out of Syria? Um, so to lose, essentially, is that we will, there will be a bit of a power vacuum when we leave. So uh, essentially, we have a lot of allies, the Kurds, who have been working with to fight ISIS, and they are in the northwestern part of Syria. The problem is, is that when we leave, we won't be there as a buffer uh, for our other uh, ally, Turkey, who's uh, rather difficult, and has essentially promised that they would be moving in militarily. And, and if they didn't do it, certainly the Syrian government and the Russians would. And that's not good, because we've uh, been working with the Kurds for a long time. Uh, they're interpreting this as a betrayal. Uh, on the flip side, we have been in Syria for quite a long time. Um, we have had some close calls with the Russians, and we've had to do deconfliction zones with them to make sure that our, our aircraft don't hit into each other or anything like that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just dangerous, right? So we need to find a way to get out, but we should do it in a way that's coordinating with our allies, because we can't stay in the Middle East forever. Uh, the American people don't want this. If you look at opinion polling, 71% of them want us to do less military action. And we also need to focus on Russia and China. I, I think they're the long-term threat. I'm glad you mentioned that because it's amazing when you look at where we were in the 90s after the Gulf War and certainly more so after 9-11 with that laser focus on the Middle East. I remember Mitt Romney back in 2012 on the campaign trail saying we have to worry about Russia and President Obama at the time was saying what, what are you looking at an 80s spy movie Mitt? Uh, Russia's not a problem anymore but but we've learned that is certainly not the case. Exactly. You also have a report that was done by the bipartisan National Defense Commission that warned that our military is stretched incredibly thin, uh, and this has been confirmed by the uh, Government Accountability Office, by uh, reports done by the Rand Corporation. We just don't have the money or the manpower. We're stretched too thin. We have $21 trillion in debt. The global war on terror has cost us uh, $5.6 trillion. Iraq itself is $1.3 trillion. And the question is, when, when are we going to be forced to make hard choices about where to put our units and uh, how to maintain all of our alliance structures? Uh, we can't do everything, and we should start to prioritize. There were people who told President Trump uh, Trump on the campaign trail that the idea of America first really was America alone. Do we run that risk when you start drawing back or is this a matter of being more strategic about it? Uh, we run that risk if we do so in the abrupt manner that President Trump just did when announcing it. Uh, we need to be considerate for allies on the ground. Um, there are lives at stake. We need to consider nuance. It's not as simple as, oh, we should leave tomorrow and nothing bad will happen. But it's also not as simple as we should stay forever uh, and ignore the cost. Yeah. Uh, that ignores the American people and we need to think very smart and strategically about this. And Trump needs to do a better job of fulfilling his promises, but doing it in a way that makes sense for everyone. Right, right before we go, is there a difference between the way that President Obama handled getting out of Iraq when many people said you're sort of giving the terrorists a date when, hey, you can come back in and, and ISIS moved in and filled that vacuum and what President Trump did? Well, uh, I don't think that you should be giving a date. I, that was a criticism that Trump levied at Obama. Uh, he, unfortunately, uh, did the same thing with Syria. Uh, but at the exact same time, sooner or later, you have to uh, get out, even if that date isn't um, with a lot of fanfare. Um, Again, like I said, we need to prioritize. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you look at veterans, 61% of them want us to uh, withdraw or downgrade our presence. And I think that's just a smart thing to do. Yeah. All right. John Del Grover, we'll, uh, I'll tweet out a link to your piece on foxnews.com.